QuickBooks Online 2023. Record short-term investment in stocks and bonds. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the sample company. If you want both of these open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser to do so. You can get to the incognito window by selecting the three dots up top in the browser if using Google Chrome. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And opening up the incognito window, then typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to look at the difference between the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. If you want to switch between the two views, you can hit the car drop down and switch the view on down below. We're going to open up a couple tabs in order to put reports in our major financial statement reports, the balance sheet, the income statement, as we do every time, right click in the tab up top, duplicate in the tab, right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate again. As the tab to the right is thinking, we're going to go to the tab to the left and the reports on the left hand side, opening up in our favorite reports, the balance sheet standard. If you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports back to the to our Get Great Guitars tapping to the left. Actually, I'm going to keep on on to the right now and then go down to the reports again, opening up in our second tab, the P&L, the profit and loss report. And then now let's close up the hand boogie. Let's change the range. We're working in 2023. So 010123 tab, uh, 123123. I'm just going to put the whole year, January through December 2023, run it. There's nothing there because we haven't done anything for the profit and loss thus far. Tab to the middle, close the hand boogie, scrolling up, changing the range in from 010123 to 123123 and run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. So in prior presentations, we set up the company file, we then put our beginning balances within the system. And now we're thinking about those types of transactions that are often done when you first start the company. So let's just give a quick recap of that. If I close up the, and just look at the accounting equation, you'll recall that the, the assets represent what the company has. They have them in order to help us generate revenue. The equity and liabilities are how we financed the assets. The reason we're buying assets in the business and not outside it is because we think we can get a return on it, meaning income on the income statement side of things in the future. So how did we get the assets? Well, we're going to first need capital. That means the last time we focused on the, the primary two things we start out and we start a company to get capital. We put money in ourselves as the business owner or we get a loan. So we did those transactions, which aren't normally done on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're often done when starting or expanding a business. Then we're going to use those assets to purchase property, plants, and equipment. Oftentimes the major machinery that we might need or whatever we're going to buy in order to generate revenue in the future. But before we do that, we're going to, we're going to say that we put more, we got a decent amount of capital here that's just sitting here until we actually buy what we're going to buy for the assets, we might want to put some of it in an investment account. So we're going to put some of it in an investment account. The idea here being that we're, we're not holding it in an investment account as our business structure, meaning this business is in business to sell guitars, generate revenue that way and have guitar lessons and whatnot, not to generate revenue through investments 
and stocks and bonds generated re revenue with dividends and interest. Some businesses might be in that business, but that's not what this business is designed to do. So what I'm trying to emphasize is the fact that if we had excess cash due to the business doing well, and we, we, we then would want to, if we have excess cash, we're not gonna use in the business, give it to the owner, so the owner could invest, meaning draw it out of the business so the owner can invest it in stocks and bonds or whatever investments they want to do. The reason it's in this business is to achieve the business objective, revenue generation from selling of guitars and whatnot. But we might put some of it in a short-term holding account so that we can hold on to it until we're ready to, to spend it on machinery and equipment. That's the general idea. However, you can also have QuickBooks being used for your personal bookkeeping as well. It works quite well. And in that case, you have a different objective. It's, your objective is basically to live well. Uh, but so the accounting is actually a little bit more confusing in that case. But you might then uh, organize your your investments in in general in uh, in the QuickBooks software. And so you can kind of apply this concept to that as well. We'll kind of touch on that. Okay, so we're going to take the money out of the checking account and put it into like an investment. We're thinking like mutual funds, for example, or a money market fund. We'll just imagine stocks and bonds that we're going to put money into. And so there's a transaction for that. Now, how can we do that? Well, we know the cash account's going to go down. The other side's going to go into some kind of asset account for investments. When I look at the forms up top and say, well, which form should I use? There is no form designed specifically for this transaction because this, once again, like many of these beginning transactions, is not something we expect to happen on a day-to-day -day basis in the future. However, so then the next question, is cash affected? Yeah, cash is affected because it's coming out of the checking account. So we could use an expense form or a check form to decrease the, the to, to record the decrease in the checking account. So if I go into an expense form, for example, then we have our categories and I can then apply it to a category down below for our, our category. So, however, uh, oftentimes I think it's easier to enter it into a register. So notice, of course, if you were using bank feeds and you had something coming out of the check feed, the checking account, and you were recording your books with bank feeds, as we'll do in another course or section, then it would still record in essence, an expense form. If we're entering our information manually, then sometimes the easier way to enter it, if it's a checking account thing, is to use the register. So let's try that. I'm going to use the register. I'm going to open up the hamburger on the left, scroll down a bit, holding control, scroll down. I'm going to go into the register, which is under the accounting view in uh, the accounting view. It's under accounting and then the chart of accounts in the business view, by the way, the register is located under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. So there it is in the business view, scrolling back on over. So we're gonna choose the register. Let's close the hand boogie. So now we've got the register. Note that it's not just for the checking account, but all balance sheet accounts. You have this kind of register functionality. If I go into the register, we can record our transactions directly in here in a little bit faster format. So we've got down here, add deposit. If I hit the little triangle, these are all the forms that can be used for transactions that are going to be hitting the checking account. So we're going to use an expense form, which is similar to a check form with no check number. It means in QuickBooks that it's a form that's going to decrease the checking account. So I'm going to say this happened on 010423 and then the payee, let's make a new one. I'm going to make them as we go here. So if I hit the drop down, we don't have one for, I'm going to say it's Vanguard. So you could just type it in here. A lot of times I type in whatever the new vendor is and then hit tab and it'll then ask you to add it so we have vendor or customer it's not really either because it's an investment company but of the two i think the vendor would be more appropriate so that's the one i'll pick and then i'm going to say this is an investment in the memo it's going to be a payment i'm going to say twelve thousand going out of the checking account into the vanguard note that you you We'll, we'll keep it there. And then if I select the drop down, we don't have anything here yet for an investment account in Vanguard. So we're going to go through our, our normal process. We were given the chart of accounts by uh, QuickBooks when we set it up. 
So if there's an account that is applicable, I will, I will use it. If I don't like the name, I'll change the name. I don't believe there's any account that, that is going to be applicable for the investment account that I want. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a new account. I could add it up top by adding a new account, but I'm just going to type it in here. And that helps me to kind of double check that the name isn't there. I'm going to say short term investment, short term investment. And then I'm going to say tab. And once again, we get the drop down window that's going to help us to add the account. So here's the account type. It's not going to be a bank account. It's going to be an other current asset account. And then this one, the detail, the detail type I will put in here is not as important. So I'm just going to say like other current asset. So I'll just use the generic other current asset, short term investment. That's the key thing we want description. We're going to, I don't really need one. I'm not going to make it a sub account of anything. Now note, as we're here with these sub accounts, I just realized that if you have multiple investments, then you might use the sub accounts to kind of group the investments together. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we see what happens on the income statement. So I'm going to save it and close it. And so that looks good. It looks like it should do what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and save it. Boom. And then I've been doing this on the balance sheet tab for some reason. So I'm going to open the balance sheet back up because I messed that up. So I'm going to go reports, balance sheet, change in the range in up top from 010123 to 12, run it to refresh it, close up the hand boogie. And then in the checking account, we should have a decrease. So if I go into the cash account here and I say, okay, we now have a decrease. There it is. It created an expense form, even though we use the register, the other side in the split account is going to the short term investment. If I go into this form, we open up not the register, but an expense form, the expense form being the form used to decrease the checking account. The, the, there's also a check form, which is basically the same thing, but it has a check number in it. So let's close this out. And that looks good. I'm going to go back. And then we could go to the short term investments. Here it is 12,000 in short term investments. So we have that as well. Looks good. No impact on the income statement again because we're kind of just setting things up that this would be what you do generally at the beginning of your business process. You got to get the investments in place and so on. Maybe not this investment, but you got to get your investments in the company, the cash to then invest in the assets, fixed assets. Okay. So now let's just take a quick look at some of the issues with regards to investments. Now, if you're a business and you're, th and you have money in, uh, the investments. So then, then you have a question of how you're going to report later, uh, income or increases and decreases in the investments. So if you're invested in say stocks and bonds, for example, then you're going to get dividend income and you're going to get interest income. Now, from a logistical standpoint, uh, you might receive the dividend income and, uh, investment income, and it might then go into the checking account. If that happens, you might have like your bank feeds set up. And then as you receive those items, you're going to record them to income on the income statement. When you record those things to income, oftentimes you might not want to put them as normal income at the top of the income statement, but rather at the bottom of the income statement as other income. Why? Because that's not what you normally do in this business for income. This business is selling guitars and whatnot. And therefore the investment income is at the bottom because that's just some random income we've, we've got that isn't part of our principal business. So that's the first thing to kind of note. Also, you might roll in uh, the income and, and reinvest it as you receive the income, which get, makes it a little bit more complex to record automatically because you're not going to get the bank feeds that are showing you uh, the income as they come in. You'll see them periodically as you check your investments. So then the question is, when, I, when do I check my investments and how do I alter or adjust my investment accounts as the investment changes over time due possibly to the dividends and in interest that are accumulating and possibly due to the fact that the underlying stock uh, is changing in value. So 
one thing to note, note that QuickBooks is not here. It's not the kind of software where you're going to track the day-to-day -day investments in the, in, in the stocks and help you for day-to-day -day trading. There's other software that you can do that. It's also not a software that's going to be updated. At, you know, you can't connect it. You might think, well, can't I connect it to my online financial institution like a Vanguard or an E-Trade so that it updates? Other software does that. And it's true. Other software does that, right? So it, it increases your balance to the market rate. QuickBooks doesn't do that because QuickBooks is an accounting software. The accounting software is designed not just to have the balance sheet balance correct at any given time, but to record the transactions related to it. So you want to record if there was an increase due to income or capital gains, then you're supposed to record the income to get and then double check that the balance matches what, what is on the statement, like you do with a bank reconciliation. You wouldn't want QuickBooks to tie into your bank and say, yeah, there's 128,000 in the account and just change this number to be whatever that is. Why? Because then you wouldn't have entered all the transactions using the double entry accounting system, which are recording and creating the income statement oftentimes. So QuickBooks isn't designed to just make a balance sheet based on what the financial institutions say. Uh, it's designed to, to tr pull in the transactions possibly to double check all the transactions so that once they are entered, you end up with the ending balance. Now there is other software. There's like a personal capital I think has one. There, I think TurboTax used to be owned by Intuit, but someone else owns it. I haven't used it since they left uh, Intuit. So I don't know much about them at this point, but there is other software that, that can connect to, to the financial institutions and just give you a balance at least per financial institution and that's and that's kind of nice so you might actually use both of those tools the software that gives you gives you just like a snapshot of where you are at a balance sheet and then a quickbooks where you have to adjust from time to time and then record the related income as you make those adjustments and then you could also use uh, some software that tracks more regularly, possibly just using the platform themselves, E-Trade or a Vanguard or your bank in order to track the day-to-day -day activities within a particular fund. So so that's something to, to just uh, be aware of. So for QuickBooks, you might then update it on a monthly basis and you might go in here and look at your statement. And if it went up, it's gonna go up for multiple reasons. It, it might You might reinvest the dividends and interest and you might and you might have capital gains or it might go down. You might have capital losses. Then the question is, should I adjust this account to the current value? Uh, uh, if, let's say it was just capital gains. Let's say I'm, I'm getting the dividends and interest as income, recording them as income. And then this amount is changing to the statement due to, due to market value fluctuation. Should I record that market value fluctuation or should I keep this at the at the standard amount uh, at cost because you'll note with equipment we usually keep it at cost and the argument for the equipment is the equipment is unique and so how your rare wear and tear on the equipment is is unique it's an estimate but if you're investing in market stocks and bonds they're equivalent to all other stocks and bonds so at least at that point in time you know exactly what the value is so there's actually a good argument then to make the adjustment to market value here where the argument isn't quite as strong to adjust like your equipment to market value because you don't know exactly what the market value is here you do know what the market value is even though the market might be wrong in terms of the long term so so then you could adjust it if you look at the like generally accounting accepting rules for adjusting there's different rules in terms of whether you're going to hold it short term or long term and whatnot. I'm not going to get into that in detail. I'll just kind of discuss the different ideas you might use. If you say, okay, what if this went up by a thousand? Then if you're going to, and we'll do this in the adjusting entries, your issue is going to be, well, if it goes up by a thousand, what am I going to do? I can, I, is there a form I can do to record that transaction? No, because there's no, that's not a normal transaction in our accounting process. So we might have to just use a journal entry, which I would think would be an adjusting journal entry that you might do at the end of the month when you get the statements. And you might then increase this if it went up by a thousand. Where's the other side going to go in the double entry accounting system? There's two options. You could create another account in equity 
that would be the other side, which would record the unrealized gains and losses. That's not usually the easiest method that kind of confuses things. Most people will just write it off to the income statement, meaning income. It's unrealized income. So you might call it unrealized income because you haven't yet sold the stock. And once again, you probably wouldn't put it on the top of the income statement, but rather on the bottom of the income statement as other income, because it's not part of your normal operations. So we'll talk more about that when we get to the adjusting entries. Also, I just also want to point out that if you have your investment here on like your personal, say you're using QuickBooks for your personal investments, then the question is, well, how should I break out my investments? Like if I have investments in a whole bunch of different mutual funds or even stocks, should I list out all the stocks in QuickBooks? And generally the answer is no, right? Because that's too much detail. You want to get into all that, all that detail in the software, like at E-Trade or Vanguard and QuickBooks should give you a summary of where you stand at any given point in time. So one method you might use is this, if, if you might use big group categories, like these are my investments in, in stocks. These are my investments in bonds. That's one way you can do it. Although many people invest in 401k plans that have both stocks and bonds within them. So it's difficult to do that. Another method you might use is that you might invest, you might record a, a, an item per institution. So if you're investing in multiple places, like a Vanguard and E-Trade and your bank or something, then you might just say, I'm gonna create an investment account and then have a sub account per institution and just adjust your overall balance on a per institution basis, having all the detail then with the Vanguard statements and, and possibly with like a personal capital or a Quicken kind of uh, report as well to supplement your more detailed investment kind of strategies so that you have an overall uh, investment here. So that's another, and the other way, the other thing you might wanna think about is if this was your personal investments, the question is, is this a short-term investment that you can get into in order to pay off current obligations that are coming due, like the mortgage, if it was a personal income statement, or are they under the umbrella of like an IRA or a 401k plan? Therefore, you might break out your investments between current investments that are you have access to and then put the long-term investments, those under an umbrella of an IRA or a 401k that you can't access readily down here so that you have some comparison between your current assets that you could use in the event of an emergency or to pay for your upcoming uh, expenses as opposed to those that are kind of locked in for the long-term. And one more thing just to note on the investments that you, when, if you were to record an increase in this investment account, and we'll do this with the adjusting entries, you could just rec just have a debit to this account to make this balance 3,896 to match what's ever on the financial statement. Or you could create another account, possibly a sub account, that's unrealized gains and losses for the inventory assets. So you can try to break out your unrealized losses in a separate account. And that might give you some idea of what you bought the assets for. And then, and then another account that shows you the gains and losses since the point of purchase. That gets a little bit more confusing when you buy and sell stocks a lot, because you know, you have to allocate out the, the, the allocation between the two, but those are just some ideas. Those are just some concepts with the investments. So next time we'll take some of our cash and we'll start buying, uh, equipment with it. So now let's just open the trial balance to check our numbers. So I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it. And then let's go to the reports on the left hand side, close up the hand boogie, type in, I'm just going to type in trial balance, the trusty TB and range change, change in the range in 01, 01, 23, tab 12, 31, 23, tab, run it to refresh it. And this is where we stand at this point in time. If everything uh, lines up great if they don't line up try extending the date range it's often a date issue if you see that, that a number has changed when you change the range drill down on the data and then go into the one that has a, a date that's different and then you can change the date for the practice problem be careful doing that in practice however 
And uh, if it's still there's still a problem at the end of entering the first month of data input, we'll go into the actual uh, transaction details. And sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to find some issues at that point.